a brother, an anonymous questioner. He says, I have accidentally experienced semen during daylight hours. Is my fasting invalid? Obviously, that happened in Ramadan or whenever he is fasting. Having a sexual discharge could be due to a stimulation, could be due to having uh, a, a close intimate relationship, could be simply due to mere thinking without even touching oneself, and each would result in a different excretion. There's something called mani, mani, uh, which requires ghusl. This is a sexual discharge which happens as a result of uh, what we call it in pharmacology, ejaculation. After having a complete state which may lead to having an intercourse, even if he does not have it. So it could be due to having a complete intimationship or due to physical stimulation. So if that leads to this kind of ejaculation, that's called many. And if it happens during Ramadan, even without having uh, a sexual relationship, that invalidates fasting. Similar to, and pardon me for the word, but this is just to explain, and I will tell you why, why I'm saying this, such as masturbation for instance. I'm not discussing now uh, the hukm of this practice, the stimulation, but I'm talking about it because many youth who do not know that would invalidate their fasting they actually do that on a regular basis. Besides, it is haram. Actually, it invalidates fasting. And it would require them to make up the day, and it is a major sin. So the sin would be doubled. The sin of doing the stimulation, the sin of uh, invalidating your fasting, and uh, 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 doing this awful thing during a great act of worship such as uh, al or fasting. The second is what is known as al-mazi. Al-mazi is also uh, a discharge which happens as a result of mere thinking. Thinking without uh, a touch, without physical stimulation, so that may lead to experiencing a very, very little discharge. This is not an ejaculation. A major difference between the two, I'm not going to speak about uh, the characteristics or the physical appearance or the texture. Rather, I will talk about something you can distinguish between the two. One is an ejaculation and the other is mere excretion uh, without the ejaculation, which is called mazi. And that requires, number one, to wash your private and to wash the clothes which have been soiled with this mazi and to perform wudu, not ghusl. And that happened to some of the companions. And Ali ibn Abi Talib, may Allah be pleased with him, actually complained to the Prophet ﷺ through somebody else. He did not speak to him directly because he was son-in-law. Okay? So the Nabi said it would be sufficient to do this and that, as I discussed with you just right now. Wash your private and wash the body which uh, the body part which was soiled with the uh, mazi and also the clothes if they had been soiled with the mazi. Um, there is al-wadi. Al-wadi is what is experienced after urination, the drop or two. Okay? And al-wadi would take the hukm of you must wash it off, wash your private and perform wudu, uh, wudu uh, as usual. Uh, rather, Abdul Hakim, sometimes it is hard, it is very hard to find uh, metaphoric words which, which I can definitely use, but many of the audience, particularly the youth, would not relate this to, to the question or to their daily lives. So I would uh, kindly request you to pardon me if I have to use some medical terms in order to be very clear and precise so that the kids, the youth, the teenagers would know exactly what would make them in a state of major impurity. I met this guy who was performing Hajj with us and uh, 
he came to me, he's a teenager coming with his family, and he told me that he's done something really bad, and that was during the day of Arafat. It was the practice which I just mentioned earlier. And of course, I couldn't believe myself. I mean, what's so exciting here? The scene, what we see around is basically something would make a person tend to cry, to humble himself and herself, to seek forgiveness and repentance. But we have some cases like that. So in this case, I'm talking about one case. I don't have to mention others. So when you're confronted with something like that, you have to understand that we have to close the gap and you have to be realistic and you should not bury your head in the sand okay and say you can be talking about that well they talk about that in much open way in much more open way and very explicit in the seats in the school when they open their books to study and when they're surfing online much worse than that okay so if you do not face the reality and really Somebody has to play that role to communicate with the youth and explain to them particularly with regards to the concept of Tahara. Because without Tahara, the whole life is messed up. Imagine the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said when he passed by uh, two graves and he said that they are being punished. As far as one of them is being punished in his grave because he used not to he is not to clean up after urination. We're not talking about masturbation now. We're not talking about major impurity. We're talking about minor impurity where he would urinate but not clean up afterward. So obviously the urine drops would soil his body and his clothes. He will make wudu and say Allahu Akbar forever. But your prayer is invalid. It is not accepted. So I see people in Hajj. Uh, you, you know, you get this uh, chance while making wudu to see people uh, urinating while standing, using the urinal or whatever, without bothering to use any water or tissues, and they just turn around to make wudu. Yes, I'm shocked. You know why am I shocked? Uh, I am shocked because those people spend uh, literally thousands and thousands of dollars. Some had to pay like 20 grand in addition to a vacation, which this uh, also can be interpreted into money and cash, leaving family and friends and business and coming to perform Hajj and they return home without actually performing Hajj for this very simple thing. Simple as far as it could have been avoided. Simple because it could have been fixed. Use water, use the tissue if no water available or even stones to remove the impurities, to remove the, 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 the urine drops. After answering the call of nature, you must do istinja, you make sure that you're cleaned up. So when you make wudu, you have a tahara of the body, of the clothes, and of the spot which you're offering the prayer on. So I feel sorry for those people who may be very educated with regards to the dunya, but I see that they have gray hair and I see that some of them is a dean of a college, a president of a university, a CEO of, of a company and he doesn't know that he's not praying. How could you do tawaf while you are in a state of najasa? So everything will be ruined and that's why I would not mind to go over this over and over and even speak about it openly. Hopefully that the word will spread and people will explain to each other. And if some of the parents who are reluctant to speak to their children about that openly, just refer them to uh, this part or this segment of the episode of answering this question.